stole, I stole a sword out of a bar and it was uh, like this broad sword that was hanging up behind the bar and the bartender was like, don't you? Because she saw me looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like looking at it and I'm like talking to my friend. She's like, I know what the f this guy's thinking, right? And my buddies pull up the van <laughs> in the front. I said, get it ready. Keep the door open. <laughs> I, I literally hopped over that. Um, I hopped over that bar and I grabbed that fucking sword off the wall and I ran out of that bar with a sword in my hand and people chasing me and just got into a moving van and yeah. <laughs> Hey, welcome everybody to the X5 podcast. I'm David Lynham. I'm here with Cassio. We have uh, so many of my good friends in here today, but the most important person in the room we have, he never does these now. He never does interviews. So we're lucky to have him. We have Johnny Stevens from the band, Holly Suspect with us. Everybody, please give him a round right. of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Of First course. and foremost, like I know you don't do these a lot. So I don't. It means a lot that you got up and, uh, Got up early, I might add. He's a lot that you just got up. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask him if he even has been to bed since last night's show. But uh, congrats on all the sold out shows you've had. Like, man, y'all have really just accomplished so much. Like, from starting out, what y'all started out in Massachusetts? That's right, yeah. <sighs> and got several Grammy nods. <laughs> three albums, three number ones. That's yeah. a pretty good ratio. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, four albums. Oh, four albums. Five yeah. number ones. Get your shit straight. Well, <laughs> Maybe we should restart this. Yeah. 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 All right, man, I've, I've contributed. I'm out. You've <laughs> <laughs> been blessed. It's, it's fucking gnarly. Also, it's so fucked up that you're like, he's the most important person around. These are your friends, bro. <laughs> By the way, if y'all are just tuning in, this is a good group of dudes, and uh, you guys are funny. I'm excited, actually, to be here. It's cool. Yeah, you've got a sold-out show tonight, and your past, what, three sh uh, Has every show been sold out so far? I think so. And it's kind of mind-blowing. <sighs> that yeah, is mind-blowing. Awesome. When you started doing this, did you ever think that you would be this far into it? No. When you came, when y'all put the band together, was it just like I want to put out some original songs and just get it recorded and play some local shows and that be the? It wasn't. We didn't care about originals at the time. It was you know doing cover shows for years, which I still love. I still love seeing a good cover band too. I was out a couple weeks ago. Um, I saw a great fucking cover band, and I miss that. I miss playing in bars. So I just did a show in a bar and played a lot of covers, and it was nice. Like You can tell a musician that's done that for a long time. Yeah. Like, they're just so seasoned on stage. You can tell people that have played empty rooms for yep. years, and yep. they're just so comfortable. And I mean, we played up in Cape Cod and, and different parts of Massachusetts, and you know, you'd have six to ten people in a, oh, in yeah, a little dude. bar, and, and you'd hear, like, <laughs> this eruption of applause, and you're just playing some covers, and you're like, yeah, they fucking love us, and you look up, and it's like, <laughs> the Bruins just scored, you know what I mean? <laughs> I've been there. I've been playing shows where I'm like, you got to turn off the TV because there's cashing on the TV while I'm playing a show. I will be in 100%, man. My ADD is just, it's like that. That's funny. There's like nothing like telling the band, hey, man, don't interrupt the game, all right? You guys can play, but wait till after the game. Yeah. yeah. Right, thanks, man. Yeah. Appreciate that. I did a comedy show in Orlando and they bumped the start because the Orlando Magic was in the playoffs. Happens. And I'm like, well, that, is that why nobody's here? Are they coming after the game is over? Because when the game ends, there's five people still here. We might as well crank it up for these five. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the sports will fuck you up in the entertainment world. So did you just start a clothing line? I did. Dude, that's ballsy. That's awesome. I've wanted to do it for so long, and... Uh... I fucking did it, but now I'm under investigation. For what? Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that. should I send my order for that mini bag? <laughs> I did. Um, I did a, a decent amount of sales in a week, and then I pulled the product. And I don't think this company's ever had that happen um, to that scale. And so they like froze all my payments, and they they got uh, yeah. I'm under investigation for. I'm like, there's nothing illegal about selling clothes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta make sure that like my business LLC is all legit and my taxes and my you know they're looking for my residences and proof of this that and the other sending in like shipping information and correct tracking numbers it's it's wild like 
I don't know. You don't so, know what caused it? What caused the just too many sales too know. fast? Yeah, I think it triggered something, but um, I guess you know that's cool. It's like now I'm learning a different thing. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So that's cool. There's probably a million hurdles you're gonna have to face mm -hmm. before you get to the end of that road. On, yeah. On that. What's the brand? It's called Terrible House. And what what is when you started it? Like you got to have some kind of concept. What do you? Th I mean, what's your thinking behind it? Okay, so is there a style? I genuinely like fashion. Like I enjoy different th and I always go through different phases right um but one thing that is like I will never get sick of is ju are just giant hoodies that you can just kind of drown in and just Dude, I'm in one you know what I mean I, like I just love a fucking hoodie and I feel like for so long hoodies were not seen as a thing of fashion but maybe like a thing of like slobbiness like if you're wearing a hoodie you don't really give a fuck about yourself so, <laughs> yeah. yeah so I'm just starting with like high-end hoodies and shit and the price point's a little high a lot of the the fans the band fans are like what the fuck are you doing and I'm like well this isn't you know, table merch. This is yeah, like, yeah. this is like, if you know, if you, if you don't have it, then you don't have it. That's what yeah. it is. It's, just, it's for, you know, it, it costs a lot actually to make them individually. They're, they're getting custom made and uh, I'm taking it seriously. Yeah. So yeah, it's just another outlet. Yeah. I guess. Are you going to expand that? Or are you? Mm -hmm. hundred percent. Yeah. I want to do cross collaborations and shit, but everything I ever drop is going to be Weak tops. I hear Adidas has some openings. You might get. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Is it too soon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was just, I was thinking about that. There's somebody to partner up with. They're desperate for money now. They're loot, They're hemorrhaging it now. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I've been a big hoodie guy, and I'm not a real fashionista like yourself, but... Uh, I would beg to differ, so... <laughs> <laughs> with these pants right <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've got to go play a cover show tonight and so uh i feel you man but i i really do emulate all the accomplishments you had and i and i know you've uh it it takes a lot to get four guys to row the boat in the same direction i mean i can't imagine like i've been in a band with somebody for 20 years and like the way they hold a glass of water sometimes makes you want to strangle the shit out of you them. understand yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 uh tell me this when when did y'all switch from uh y'all used to obviously travel in a band and band and trailer when did y'all mm -hmm. switch to a bus I think around 2017 was the first time I ever stepped foot in a real bus. And that was after, you know, the band has been together since 2009. So it was almost a decade of doing the, we had a forerunner for a while. We had a conversion van for a while. We had, you know, just whatever the fuck you can yeah. get and just back and forth. You know, you never see that shit anymore. And it's like, all right, the TikTok thing is cool. I give it up for social media. All of it is like, yeah, it's, it's amazing, right? What yeah. you, how you can connect with people. But like there's this band right now following us around, Silly Goose. I got to shout him out. Uh, do you know about <laughs> this gonna, shit? I was going to break it up. I can't <laughs> wait to hear your take now on listen, it. Now <laughs> listen, I don't know if they have some type of family funding or something, because they got a pretty good rig. They got like a trailer that's, you know, all wired up, got a generator and shit. I don't know. Maybe they got some family money or whatever, but I'm not going to judge it. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like 15 years ago, if I seen some kids like rolling around in a van and then maybe they had somebody funding them, I'd, I'd be like, all right, that's cool, but do it without money. Right? Yeah. But in this day and age, just to, just to fucking do it, just to get in a van and they just like, they're all about it. They come to every show, they get in the parking lot when our fans are leaving, they throw down for three or four songs, get the fuck out of there before the cops show up. And really? like, yeah. They play a gig in the parking lot or whatever venue. Yeah. How the suspect is mm -hmm. playing. Yeah. No shit. Yep. So are they there? So if you're in Huntsville, they're going to be in Huntsville. Oh, they're in there Destin, tonight. They're going to be there yep. if you're wherever. Yep. And they just I think it's the most I punk rock thing I've seen in a while. I, just, I want to check that you out. You didn't tell me about this. It's, it's so cool. They do and they rip and they throw down Silly Goose and they just get out there and they're like, we're fucking Silly Goose. We're rap rock or some shit. I don't know. I haven't gotten a chance to actually go outside yet and listen because I'm always like catching my breath. But I think it's really cool that there is a band in today's day and age that isn't just relying on tiktok again i'm not shitting on tiktok i use social media but yeah it's cool to see somebody getting out there and driving around and handing out like i don't know flash drives maybe these days or something but cds and doing it the right way you yeah know? like we one talk by one by that. one getting the fans we talk about that a lot how it's just not the same as it used to be you don't see that drive no. it's just now you you do it in your room and you you know you get it on the on social media platforms and all that and it's not the same as that living out of your van eating bologna thing yep. anymore no, exactly. No, I think that's part of being in a band is is really doing it to that extent. And I feel bad kind of for these kids that'll that'll have like a viral song on TikTok, and it happens a lot right now in the, in the industry. And the labels are signing these 
artists for you know for that for yeah. that one song get yeah. that song and it's like if you don't repeat that success in x amount of days um which is unlikely because the TikTok, it just moves you know yeah. you're hot for a few days and then it's over um and so they, they'll think like oh my god i made it i reached a million people and blah 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 and uh unfortunately that's not how careers are built you know yeah. it would be nice if it was that simple but you do have to go out there and shake everybody's hand one by one for years and years and years to come and that's how you can at least in my experience what's well, the difference now between a hook and a song where it used to be the songs were good now it's the hook right you know you make the full song that's that to me that's what makes a big difference in mm -hmm. the older music versus the new music because it wasn't the layouts were all completely different there wasn't that you know specific structure yeah and now it's it's a hook Yep. instead of a song it's, it's swinging around though it's swinging around again and I'm, I'm starting to notice more like i mean just this tour being sold out whereas last year the tour was not sold out and i'm like i think the pandemic kind of rocked people for a while across the world and country and people were afraid to go out and live like kind of like people up for a second yeah, you know sure. um but i feel i feel like people are ready to get away from the screens for a second and, and go back to that live feeling that you can only you know, you know yeah there's a difference between like listening to something or just having the physicality of a fucking bass drum hitting your chest you feel that pressure now every every album gets more successful do you feel like god damn how am i gonna repeat that shit again you don't feel that pressure it's the opposite i'm like okay i did my thing yeah yeah if, if it is today <laughs> yeah. fucking great man i've yeah, done no, everything if i want to do here's the thing with really highly here. suspect though all of their albums are different yes yeah. and, and none of the songs in that album you was talking about structure they're they're not no, the album's not structured. It's got highs and lows, and it's everywhere. Yeah. And that's what I love about Highly Suspect so much is they change everything up. Every album's different, and then within those albums, you'll have one or two songs that connect everything back together. That's kind of on the same level. Yeah. How do you write? Does melody come to you with lyrics at the same time, or is, is it different? Every song different. Um, first of all, I appreciate that rundown. You obviously have listened, and you you nailed it. Um, but there's always a connection with but how do i write i don't it's like man no process it's just, i wish there was a fucking process <laughs> i have so <laughs> many more yeah, yeah. I'm like if somebody knows the answer to that please <laughs> give me that idea. no it's I'll always start different i'll pumping them out even faster yeah. if i got a process i mean sometimes it's literally all of us in a room and we're just getting baked and fucking a riff comes up and it's like that's it and we start going and within 10 minutes we got something and other times i'll have uh something on my notepad that's just some words sitting there for years and eventually i'll have a melody for it or sometimes i'm fucking i came back from a bar in in Florida with with Matt Kofus, the rhythm guitarist, and we were just hammered at four in the morning. We made this really, really hard song, and it was done in five minutes. And sometimes they take years, but there's no process. Like I wish yeah. sometimes I can't think of anything for months. My old singer used to write his best material when he was heartbroken, <laughs> like when somebody just ripped his heart out of his chest. I was like, "We about to fucking make it now." Man. He's about to come out with some shit, man. I'm sorry you're heartbroken, but yeah. this means great things for the band. And that's uh, common. That's common with a lot of musicians. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a strong emotion, and it brings in a lot of it sucks. It yeah, sucks. girls ripping your heart out. Well, I don't know why you <laughs> feel the need to thank them later, but like it seems to always produce great mm -hmm. material. Do you do that? I know it's all different, but do you do that? Do you go, hey man, this is gonna be my therapy. I'm gonna kind of oh. get some shit out, or are you kind of closed up with? No, I definitely get it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's cathartic. <laughs> yeah, and it's cathartic at the time, and you're like, ah, oh, this is so helpful, and I'm I'm expressing my feelings, and I'm just yeah. fucking, and then. You gotta play that shit again for the next 10, 15 years. You know what I mean? <laughs> 20 years, 30, however fucking long. And I'm like, fuck, I don't wanna think about this bitch anymore. Like, I'm done. Like, what am I doing? This sucks. And it puts you in a terrible headspace, but the fans connect with the heartbreak. Right. You're right. It's like fucking heartbreak is what fucking, uh, is relevant, I guess. And so guess they world. interpret it different than you even meant it. Sure. Be. So you're like, it, it sucks to tell people what it's about in mm -hmm. an interview because somebody may be like, oh, I thought it was speaking to me. I thought it meant something totally different. Yeah. You know? It's crazy. That's another reason That's why I stop doing about interviews. Just, oh, yeah. I it's just another... don't, I don't want to explain yeah, I would... anymore because it like, you know, takes away the mystery. People are like, wait, what the fuck? Uh -huh, I just <laughs> killed 10 of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> who does, are you in charge of, who writes the treatments for y'all's videos? Because mm. they are fucking crazy, dude. Yeah. I love them. Appreciate that. Um, 
and you they know. look expensive as shit to make too. <laughs> some of them have been some of them we've been able to do uh, you know not on a budget but typically i usually come up with the idea and then work with the band to make sure that they're happy with it and we kind of brainstorm and shit i'll have usually like the first draft down of like here's the story that i want to tell and they'll come in and you like what if we did this that and the other so it's a collaborative effort there yeah and then we'll find a director we'll send our treatment out to a bunch of directors that will then send back like revised like real professional where it's like they've got fucking reference pictures and shit yeah. like that and we're like okay this guy gets the vibe or this girl gets the vibe or this one doesn't and we'll, and we'll figure out you know who can do it within the correct budget and who is an artist and our thing is i never want to make a, a video where we're just like no, so, meaning, oh, yeah, I was watching like fucking VH1 Classic the other day and I was like, you know, thank God the Clash at least plugged their instruments in because everybody else in the 80s was just playing <laughs> fucking uh, George yeah. Michaels up there and wham, just fucking dancing around and his guitar's not plugged in. I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, we like to make movies and shit. You know? Yeah. Like, I feel like that's part of the, the creative artsy expression for us is to, is to put film down too. Were you there for when they, when they did the Lydia video? I was. So how, how was that video shot? I want to hear it. Oh, that was like the most anxious. Like that was, I was anxious. Really, I was. Uh, I'm anxious looking at the girl. I'm like, <laughs> how long did it? How long did she hold her breath? So she's for? real deal. Uh, her name is Marina. I don't even want to try to say her last name. She's from Russia. Yeah, she's a, f a award winning free diver. Oh, okay. I guess there's awards for that. I didn't know, but she, <laughs> she's <laughs> not swimming. Yeah, but she, she she can hold her breath for I think something like nine and a half minutes. Oh, what? Shit. And she has Holy to shit. lay down. So she, so we found this very deep pool where they film a lot of um, underwater shit for like video game, like Call of Duty. Interestingly enough, they you know it's out in the desert and it's this deep twenty foot pool just for filming things where so that they can get it dark. Yeah, you know, get, and, and control the lighting. And um, she would kind of do this like tantric breathing or whatever it was, but she'd lay on her back and, and breathe in and out for five minutes at different speeds and kind of like get her oxygen right. And, <laughs> Your anxiety is already she building goes, yeah, she's She did it 11 <laughs> times. She did 11 different takes. Of what? This. Yeah. Good Lord. 11 different mm -hmm. takes. And there was safety divers down there with her with tanks and shit, but she didn't, she didn't need it once. And like, uh, yeah, I assumed y'all brought down an oxygen mask and like threw it up and then press record and like, <laughs> it's obviously in slow motion, right? It's played back in slower motion. than. Uh, a little bit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is a little slow motion, but even still, it's not more than half. So I think each take was like two and a half minutes or whatever like that. So, Jeez. God, Jesus. I couldn't have watched that. That makes <laughs> yeah. my chest hurt just thinking about <laughs> yeah. 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 oh, yeah. 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 it. Yeah, yeah. People don't believe it's real. There's so many people that are like, I do that's, too. That's, that's I not real. I was, th I was yeah. hoping you'd like let the cat out of the bag and what really happened. <laughs> we actually put out, if you go on there, there's a behind the scenes video because we were smart enough to put a GoPro down there so that you can see in real time the safety divers around her and the whole process of her getting tied up and untied and, and whatnot. And just because we knew people were going to be like, this isn't real. I was like, it is. Real. Dustin, pull Damn. that video up if you're in there. Yeah. Um, to pull that up pull on the it TV. Up. It's, it's the, the video behind the scenes shit. That's great. That's awesome. Hey, you uh, were talking about the music and the, the videos kind of being all different styles and the albums have been almost different themes. Um, do the... I mean, you're still together, so I assume it's a yes. But the other guys are they are they've got to be open to this too. Uh, I mean, do you come and go? Hey, I want to sound totally. I want to sound closer. Maybe hip hop. This album. Are they all in? Have they all been in from the beginning, or is there some yeah, persuading? Well, 100. And it's so funny too because we put out an album, uh, MCID, which was our our technically our fourth album, but it was the third on a label. So people think it's the third album, and it was much more electronic driven, and there was some hip hop yeah. factors in there. And um, when we were making that everybody was having so much fun and we're so on board and then you'll read and that's why i gotta stay the fuck away from comments but people be like oh that's just johnny masturbating that was like all his idea and all of that and it's like no like please don't take credit away from the musical palette of my band members who happen to also love hip-hop and love electronic and love neo soul and like do you know what i mean so yeah. no we would i would never put anything out with them that they're not on board with we would never put anything out that we are not fully together and committed on and y'all didn't decide on when you first started the band y'all didn't say this is the sound we want y'all just started writing we still haven't found out. a sound we, there's no sound for us we still haven't found a lane yeah i, I agree <laughs> every album's so different yeah it's boring to uh i don't i never want to get like locked in to you know one thing none of us do and you so. said that from the beginning i believe mm -hmm. i remember seeing an early interview with you that's 
one of the things you said early is I don't want to be pigeonholed one one thing. Yeah. And yeah. that's great. Fans can go for the ride with you, you know? Yeah, and then people, um, I think what happens is like there'll be certain songs that will have radio success. And so then that becomes what the sound of the band should be in the eyes of the fan. They're like, okay, well, this is the one that I've heard so much. Why doesn't the rest of it sound like this? Why doesn't every song sound like that? And um, that's when you'll start to get a little bit of pushback from people that are like, well, I don't fucking like the other shit you do. Fine. Fine. You know what I mean? yeah. like, I'm not I'm really like not out here. I swear to God, I swear I'm not out here trying to, and it sounds so selfish and maybe it is, but I'm not out here trying to pander to anybody but us. I want to make sure that we're having a good time making what we're making because otherwise, and I feel like you guys are all crazy. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Do you ever have conflicts with the label about what to release? I will say in all honesty that we have been so blessed and so fortunate like for real to have a label that supports us. And that was the thing when we were initially um, getting signed, there was a few different companies and, you know, I, I won't name them, but they, they were kind of in like a bidding war to, yeah. to figure it out. And um, <clears throat> Lior Cohen and, and Kevin Lyles from 300, they shook my hand and said, listen, because, you know, we had talks with all sorts of different labels and they're a hip hop label and we're a rock band. And uh, I was like, eh, is this the right fit or whatever? Right. Like, they were like, listen, we will never tell you what you have to do artistically. We may advise you, but at the end of the day, you're going to be in control of your career artistically. Damn, that's Get awesome. Get that in writing, sir. Yeah, please. <laughs> you, got, you got it. And then I was like, okay, sold. That's, that's, you know, and it was less money than the other companies were offering, but it was freedom. Yep. And you've probably got friends in the industry that have had nightmare situations regarding that. Yep. And they're... <laughs> How do you I, get hooked up with him? Oh, man. Do you want the Cinderella story? <laughs> do, you want, do you want the whole fucking thing? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to give us. But, I mean, like you said, you're a rock You're a rock band going to a hip-hop label, mm. uh, and both of you are willing to go, hey, there's, you know... There's magic here. We want to work together. There's a whole long story you can read about online that talks about the Cinderella story of how this happened. But uh, as far as getting on a hip hop label, how that worked out, I do believe um, if we're going to talk straight business, I believe that we were the expansion pack. Oh, okay. Yeah. I believe that we were the token project to create cultural diversity within a label so that one day it could then be sold, which it was to Warner for $400 million Jeez. because the label became diverse enough that it was attractive and it wasn't just a hip hop label. See, that shit happens all the time uh -huh. too and it makes you nervous that somebody else has come in charge and try and steer your career mm -hmm. direction. And so you've been lucky in that even when the label was sold, they still... So Kevin still retains um, main ownership of the label and now he's in charge of Elektra and Roadrunner and so still got my dude in my corner. Man, talk about the trust of... Yeah, we're the we got to we got to expand. We want to expand for this, but we better fucking knock it out of the park. Yeah. That's a fucking big mm -hmm. trust for you guys to go. You're our guys that we're going to expand with. That's pretty fucking wild, dude. It was an honor and it still feels surreal. You know, because what he said to me, he was like, you know, and this was back in 2015. And he was like, you know, well Def Jam had Slayer. Yeah. I was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Big chance to fill there. Yeah. I mean, radio campaigns are so expensive, mm -hmm. too. And, like, before you start making money on an album. Yeah. All the tour support. I mean, y'all, when y'all started, was when the industry was shifting into 360 deals mm -hmm. and people were trying to avoid them. And now it's just unavoidable. And even back then when y'all started, uh, the streaming wasn't regulated the way it should have been. Now it's all caught up and you've survived, the, weathered the storm. I weathered the storm. I think we're the last era, I won't say the last band, but the last era of, of bands where it would become common. There's still some now, but where you can be an album band. You know, I had a talk with this with the A&R agent um, not long ago, but pretty much everything after 2014, 15, it, it went back into a singles game, which is cool. Mm -hmm. But um, not a lot of artists nowadays can like do an album, wait a couple years and people will wait patiently because I think that pop and hip hop and everything and, and social media, it's made it move so quick, move yep. so quickly, you know, and that's not, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be putting out singles in between albums or EPs or anything like that, but luckily we can make an album. And that can be our piece of work, and then we can take some time and make another one. And it's, it's very hard to find that these days. 
Do you release on EPs under protest? Do you prefer full length albums? <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder because that seems to be the way that people go now. And sometimes they don't even do EPs. It's just single by single by single, and they. I don't know release. what to do next. I'm kind of at this point. I'm like, what is the next? I mean, you're dipping into clothing, so. I'm so unfulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. This sounds so tragic. I'm so unfulfilled. Like I, I have um, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of music that I want to make. Love my band. Going to continue making music with the band forever. And but like we were talking about, there is you know a bunch of cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. And I do, and I haven't yet. But I mean, I've got years worth of music that I don't know what the fuck to do with, and I don't know how to put it out because eventually I'm going to do. You know, something under my solo name for sure. Yeah. But then, like, what what is that going to be? Do you right, know what I mean? Because everything you do in Holly Suspect is so different. Right. Too. And so. I like. Um. I think. I think everybody thinks that if I go solo, I'm going to try hip hop, and that's just not the case. Like, do you know who Charlie Crockett is? I don't know. Yes, yeah, do country you, guy. Yeah. Fucking love Amazing. that. I love Charlie Crockett. I love um, also like Mac DeMarco and shit, kind of that psychedelic shit. And I'm like, what? What does somebody Space made a blend country, between? Kinda. Yeah. No one's done that. The world's <laughs> right. Space country? <laughs> space that. country, dude. Yo, Cassio, you, take, you better copyright that shit before I do, bro. Yeah. Space country. He covered country a country song. He what? covered space a country, country song by Whiskey Myers at his uh, at the Earl. That's right, it did. And it was amazing. Thank it, you so much, It was much, really, really good. Yeah, he was talking about that pre came in here. He's like, man, there's some just just in country music. There's so many lanes. genres now and different lanes and the, you know, the Paul Cawthons. I mean, Paul Cawthons doing a show with Diplo. I mean, if you were said a country dude's doing a show with Diplo, you're like, what are you talking about? Uh, yeah, but Diplo's doing a whole country thing now under Thomas Wesley. Is he? Yeah. yeah, there's there's and then you've got the the guys that are that are old school quote unquote country that don't want to be the bro country and there's just so many lanes now i mean that is i think it's like everybody around our age though you know we we all grew up on different styles of music so we fell in love with all music so you know before that it was you're a rock guy or you're a hip-hop guy and then the the old school you know you go to my parents generation it's like what's hip-hop you know, but we grew up on it, so now it's like everything is blended with yeah. everything. It's just the lines are blurred, and yeah. I think that festivals did that. You know, before even before Crank social off. media, because what in the nineties? What did you have? Like Lollapalooza was one of the first ones, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. at least one of the big main ones and shit, where you could start, you could go see hip hop and rock and country and jet. You know what I mean? Like all in the same area, and it kind of like I think that's what helped. Because I'm sure you guys growing up was the same as me. If you weren't like the bleach black hair punk kid, <laughs> then you had to be the rap kid or you had to, you know what I mean? You yeah, had you to had stay to in the lane. fucking lane. Yeah. 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 Get your yeah. ass beat trying to cross paths. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I fell into that because I got into the metal. Mm. And man, when I was got into metal, it was like, if you're not metal, you're either metal or you're not. There was no crossover. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's a, Especially if you're in metal, you better not fuck up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. But it, it kind of sucked because it, it, it held me down so much for so long because yeah. I was in that mindset, too, where I didn't listen to anything else. And it really hurt growing as a musician yes. for a long time yeah. because that's all I that's all I would focus on. Anything else, it wasn't good. And it was kind of that... Um, looking weak sort of thing because you use metal, you know. Mm. And if you listen to rap or anything like that, that was you know, like were shunned away from everybody, and that that hurts you as a musician. Hundred percent. Now it's not like that. Everything mixes together. You know, I feel like how how have you seen your crowds with um? Because you, I mean, you even. I don't want to say joke about it, but you even talk about it on social media about how, hey, this new song that we're about to come out, y'all are probably not going to fucking like it or something <laughs> like that. But but the shows I went to after all those, it, I mean, the the crowd that is there is is loving every second of it. Have you found social media and comments is a whole different demon? But have you found much blowback from the fans? Because I feel like no, so, suspect so fans keyboard are loving warriors. It. Anybody that shows, anybody that you know buys a ticket and comes to the show, they're typically. Like, they ride or die, yeah. Yeah, they understand. It's very rare that I see somebody walk in and go, oh, and walk out. You know? <laughs> I think that, that the keyboard warriors is a whole different thing, and that's fine. That has to exist. If that doesn't exist, then you're not doing it to the correct scale. Yeah, yeah. you see some kickback, but I believe, if I'm right on this, that's the first sold-out show of 2023 for Huntsville. I believe y'all's show is the first sold-out show for 2023. No shit. Yeah. 
That's what I heard. I, I think it was on 95.1. Well, <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's going to think you're supposed to say a hard time about it, but I sold out the show. Yeah. Something, you're doing something right. Have fun yeah. following that, assholes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to handle on social media, and I understand that. I recognize that. I'm like... I think I'm hilarious. Do you know what I, mean? like, I post shit that I just think I'm so funny, and I think like maybe five percent of people get my humor because I just come across as like this fucking douche, and I know it. You know what I mean? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but the name is terrible, Johnny, and I'm just having fun. I'm just like I just want to trigger some people and fucking yeah, you know. it's so easy. Yeah. I get bored and I'm like, I mean, what are you doing this? online if you're not doing that? Honestly, yeah. you can't help trigger people. <laughs> just posting ghosts. Who gives a shit yep, what they say? That's exactly it. Posting ghosts. If you have the ability to do that, some people say they do that, and then you catch them like reading the comments and getting mm -hmm. bent out of shape. Because if you believe the negative shit, if you believe the positive shit, you got to believe the negative yeah. shit. You know, and it's so, so easy you might to well just not read any it's of so it. So easy to see that one negative comment out of a hundred good ones. Oh, and it stings, like, doesn't oh, it? Oh, Oh, because you know what? Part of what you're saying is correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Oh, full comedy show. If one dude in the back has his arms crossed, I'm on that guy. Sure. Yeah. Everybody else is dying. I'm like, I bumped. I ain't shit. Yeah, this guy you deal with that. Bunch. You deal with hecklers and shit. Uh, luckily for me, I don't, I don't get heck. Well, you know, me and you were chatting earlier. I, I like to fuck with the crowd. I like to talk to the crowd. Yeah, so I think you are the heckler. Yeah, I think they're like, wait a minute, time out. <laughs> if he's diving in, because I think I think most hecklers come with one. You say, quote unquote, edgy shit, and usually the the guy, the person that's heckling. Like got drugged there by a friend and doesn't know what comic they're seeing. So if you walk into a, you know, Daniel Tosh and you don't know what his style is, you're like, ah. And yeah. I think some people are like that. Most hecklers just get too drunk and they think they're going to be part, a part of the show. Of the show. Uh, I only did that so you could mess with me. It's like, buddy, I got it. I, yeah, we're, I, we're, <laughs> we're getting. It. I got to know. You know, this will be the last time you did that. Yeah, yeah it's, don't worry. but I think most hecklers. I don't think they start off as hecklers in the, unless they're just in the wrong place in the comedy world. Mm. But do you, but do you don't have, have you like had anybody rush the stage or anything? Yeah. Oh shit. Yep. I well, just got rushed at Red Rocks and I was like, are you fucking you kidding me? Rocks, I did. Man, I was yeah. going to ask if you've that had... Video was, the footage of that was amazing. Yeah, mm. it was fucking mind blowing. But yeah, I got rushed there. But we get hecklers. But like a fun rush? Was it just like, I want to hug Johnny? Yeah. It okay. wound up being that way but it also like, it spooked me. I'm like, we got to up yeah, because I would take it. Yeah, you can be dime bagged at yeah. any point I mean, on fucking stage. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I know I've heeds of that. I, my whole career, yeah. band guys, fucking other guys, girlfriends and stuff. I was like, one day <laughs> that's how it's going to end for everybody yeah. on this fucking stage, Some man. The security's yeah. just there to get pussy. They don't care, man. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're they're there last, night security last night was literally like, I, I just look over, you know, he's supposed to be paying attention. And he's just filming me. I'm like, are of you course. fucking kidding that's me right now? Yeah. Like, do your job. Yeah. If that's something crazy. breaks out, man. And these security guards are like, I'm out of here. Man. I'm, not paying to, I'm not paying enough to do this. Yeah. That's Rush to the stage at Red Rocks. Yeah. That's Ooh. insane. Because I, I, I would think that would be a place where you're not getting on stage how, how Red the fuck, Rocks. You know, I saw it coming for like 30 seconds. I'm like, no, this isn't happening, right? It's looking like someone going out. <laughs> it's like, like soccer. Fucking, yeah, like someone's about to streak. Is he going to go streaking? Like, I'm seeing it coming. I'm like, am I the only one seeing this? Are you kidding me right now? No, this is actually happening. Were you making a plan? Were you like, I'm gonna, should I kick first? Or <sighs> Just, you know, I'm like, literally, I don't get nervous very often, but I'm at Red Rocks and everybody's above you. And I'm like, Whoa, you know, so I'm like, I don't know. What am I going to do? I'm just hoping. And luckily, you know, um, my own crew was, was on it real fucking fast. Fast and you know intercepted he got there he got his arms around me and it was a hug it was cool but it like, was a hug then you feel like <laughs> did you know yeah, like, like, yeah I'd like <laughs> but yeah. in his head he's like i know what i posted on social media yesterday and that's what this guy's coming for <laughs> yeah you don't know it until he hugs you that's the scary you can't well, take a chance in today's yeah, world can be hugging you with the pig sticker you know <laughs> fucking... yeah i went to uh dave Chappelle and chris rock a couple weeks ago and man you want to talk about heckling mm. I spent $1,200 on a pair of tickets, and dude, I thought that would eliminate all the trash that would be sitting around me. No, sir. Everywhere. I don't know how they deal with it. Maybe it's because it's an arena, and it's just crazy, but...
The guy's yelling and yelling and yelling. He eventually passes out on my wife's back. He's passed out on her back. And I was like, listen, honey, for the sake of everybody in this fucking section, do not move. I'm telling you right now, you got to take one for the team. We all spent a lot of money on tickets. He finally passed out. Let's try and enjoy Dave Chappelle since we missed half of Chris Rock with him yelling at him. You made your wife a sleeping bag. I did. I was like, dude, you got to take it for the team, dude. So you, how many pets do you have? How many pets? Yeah. Uh, I have one and a half pets. One and a oh, half. Dude. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, let's what's, what's one and a half? <laughs> I've got 26. We, we, we got 26 dog? pets. Yeah, I've got to work till Wednesday to feed all these fucking what? things. And dude, it's crazy. My wife, I have to build a fence around my property to keep them out. Because once they're in, they're fucking in, dude. <laughs> Are they all dogs and cats? Or you got like oh, goats hell and no. Turtles, okay. chickens, pigs. Yeah. Just what you expect when you come to Alabama. Yeah, You're right. like, hey, man, a guy wearing those pants, he's definitely a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is right up Johnny's alley. This is what you should have, dude. He had a pet crow. Why we in found the fucking in the... world do I look like someone should have a pet? Well, look at it. You can see it sitting on his That's what I'm saying. Maybe it's this outfit. Maybe it's the poncho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the outfit because I can what totally see. What about me says I want a fucking pet crow? It was the mystery guy with the crow. I I want nothing to do with a fucking bird. Uh, <laughs> it is scary as hell. Dinosaur so creatures. Let's make it clear. No yeah. birds. I might look cool. Well, that's where it would end. I don't know. Birds, are, <laughs> birds fuck me up, man. This universe fucks me up. There's so many weird ass things, and birds are so like different. Oh, I know. What the fuck are they thinking about? We're new to birds in our house, but we've definitely got a handful. You have birds? Of, oh yeah, dude. We he got had everything. Crow. I'm telling. We did legit have a crow for a while. It, we found it almost dead in our yard. And <laughs> my wife nursed it to health for whatever fucking reason, and nursed it to health for six months. Fed it like force fed it with a syringe. Didn't she like close his beak and give him a little CPR? No. <laughs> <laughs> but that thing was crazy. It would fly around all day and then come back in the house and walk around. And, and then one day it just took off. End of story. Yeah. I know you were looking for a grand finale, but it just fucking flew away. Like it it's realized to. I have wings. Why am I living it's, with humans? Yeah, it's not that great in here. I'm out. Well, am I the only one who was curious how you have a half pet? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's one and a half? I didn't even pick up on that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's cool. I share it with uh, uh, another woman. <laughs> <laughs> that seemed uncomfortable. Yeah. Another no, I had a cat forever, and then I got a German Shepherd, and the cat and the German Shepherd, like it was just kind of a lot, especially with touring and shit. Like, oh, yeah. and I didn't have the time to make sure that they were going to be compatible together. And the German Shepherd, I put her through school. She's fucking brilliant. She's protective They're of great. children. No. Like she's an angel. But at that time, when she was a puppy, and I had to run out for a couple months, and I wasn't ready to you know, introduce them and they should be introduced at a young age, a, a cat and a dog. So I didn't get that chance. And, uh, I wound up giving the cat to one of my great friends, Lauren. So the cat lives in Nashville and she actually is settled into such a nice, big, beautiful home full of love and comfort and this, that, and the other that I'm like, I don't want to, I'm not going to interrupt this. So it's, it's my cat, but you know, it's being raised somewhere else. And I'm cool with that because she's happy. The cat's happy and the girl that's raising her is happy and it all worked out. And you you just bought a house in California? I didn't buy a house. I wish I bought a house. You just moved to California? I just, well, yeah, I've been living in California for almost seven years now. Bouncing back and forth between Brooklyn and, and Venice Beach. And um, I just moved from one apartment to the next. And then some ultra rich lady bought the house that I just moved into a week after I got my lease. So, but no, I don't own anything house wise. I'm like smart, fluid with this touring schedule you got. That's pretty smart. I think I want to move to Barcelona. You ever been to Barcelona? No, Barcelona. Been, yeah. No, I've toured. Uh, I used to drum tech for uh, uh, Steven Adler, and we went to South America. But I've never been to Barcelona. Similar vibe. It's that Latin thing, and just yeah. like much more. It's fun and loose food and relaxed and the incredible. food is great that. and the women are great. Everything's great. So, At least in Venice, I'm sure you get plenty of uh, ideas for songs out there. Mm -hmm. We used to live in Santa Clarita in California and we go to Venice Beach all the time. And there's so much interesting shit in Venice. I love California. People shit on it all the time. I get it. You know, like I try to... 
I used, like, I used to be very uh, politically in tune, and I eventually just got to the point where I'm just like, I just don't give a fuck anymore. Yeah. I just hate everyone. The same just, way. Like, they all suck. They're all. They all fucking we suck. We say that all the time. I wish finally somebody said <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I'm like, honestly, left and right, and anybody that pays that much attention, I'm like, y'all are not living life correctly anyway. Fucking. And that's, that's, that, that's where I got from it is just, man, it's so ridiculous how much time people dedicate and how much energy yeah. and how much they soak into that. It's mm -hmm. just like a, it's, it's, it's a, a necessity at some point where they have to, it's like, they, it's like an addiction. Yeah. It it's one big show. People. That's all it is. It's just one big fucking show and drama, soap opera. Like I can't do it anymore. You I just can't, can't believe any of it. It all makes me angry. And yeah. then I'm like, well, why should I spend my time being angry? Dude, you've probably been so much happier now that you've unplugged from yeah. that shit. Yep. I got rid of my Twitter account. I don't know. I was about to say, news. if I could just like, get out of my phone, I think I'd be the ultimate happiness. I have so much more mental space for other things, mm -hmm. you know? Um, You'll get lost in it easily. Yep. It'll suck you in. It's like watching fight videos on YouTube, <laughs> man. Yeah. Once you start watching them, I got to watch one more. I got to watch one more. Politics is like fight videos. <laughs> I don't know. 2 a.m. Still looking yeah. at this yeah, shit like, for some reason. Okay, one more and I'll go to bed. One more. <laughs> I think that happens though, like, you know, pretty often with kids and I've heard people be like, well, oh, you used to care and now you don't care. And I'm like, that's fucking right, bro. <laughs> you take the fucking sword. You be you, angry. Yeah, I'll you be can happy. be the angry, pissed off 18 year old. I'm just going to like drink some wine and fuck some bitches, bro. I'm going to relax. Right. <laughs> like, I'm gonna relax. Bro. You're a creative guy, man. Yeah. Being yeah. involved in politics does nothing but fucking hamper that mm -hmm. for sure. Why Venice? What made you go to Venice? It's got a beach. It's literally got a beach and it's in America. So, you know, if it, like that, it's so simple. We right? got a beach in Alabama. <laughs> 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 Actually, I want to check out Dauphine Island. I heard that's like... No, that's trash meat. No. Is it? Oh, God, that's fucking well, garbage. Well, it just became beach. tourist. Okay. Has it recent, recently become tour? I've never been there. There's <laughs> oil rigs in the fucking ocean. Oh. Like you can see from the shore. Okay. It's not a really pleasant Pan fucking postcard. Where it's at. Panhandle's where it's at. Yeah. You get the white sand and the, the good water there. But Venice Beach, man, there, it's it's just an interesting place. It doesn't matter. You can walk down it seven days a week and every day you're going to, it's something that's going to be interesting going on. Yeah. And it's close enough to, uh, you know, a lot of different studios and a lot of different creative places that are throughout Los Angeles. And uh, it's close to an airport. You know, you can get to the airport in 10 minutes from Venice Beach. It's right there. And I got a lot of friends out there and people are generally pretty kind. Like Los Angeles as a whole can be overwhelming you guys know you oh, for sure you know it can be overwhelming it can be full of people that are full of shit um, yeah the beach though is just there's different. fake actors everywhere <laughs> well, yeah. I, la is uh overwhelming and underwhelming at the same time sure it's yeah. like what you expect when you go out there it's not like that yeah and then it's just it's too much but the beach you know i just you know people are chilling they're smoking weed and vibing and this is a different thing all together so scamming people for their medical marijuana sure. cards oh my god that's what i've seen i got scammed on that shit <laughs> you did yeah i didn't even smoke weed at the time <laughs> like I I wait, 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 what do you mean you got scammed <clears throat> well they they have guys standing out down venice beach in yeah. these uh jumps or they uh, like scrubs but they're bright green they got pot leaves on them and they kind of bring you into this um getting your medical marijuana card and all this stuff well they they, they, get, they bring in groups at a time so you go in and you talk to this doctor so do you get headaches sometimes? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you have any stress in your life? Yeah. Are you sure you're not on like a punk reality show somewhere? <laughs> well, what what happens is you go through this doctor and he gives you this piece of paper and you go into another room and this girl takes your credit card. They tell you it's 40 bucks. All right. So she takes your, your card, she puts it in there card. and she says uh, she's going to run it for 40 bucks. And then she says, well, do you want this for three months, six months or 12 months? Well, fuck. If there's no different in price, I'll take the 12 months. Well, there's a difference in price. They don't tell you about that $180 mm. they're about to show you. And they're doctors. And they've already, and they've already got your, they got your it's card It's like a Jamaican there. dude named Dr. Ganja. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's the 40 bucks for? Yeah. Well, that's just a doctor's recommendation. Okay, so I can take this back to where I live and get a medical, medical marijuana card there. No, you have to do it here. What? So it's just a complete scam. They tell you it's $40. And you can get them anywhere down there for 25 Yeah. But there is 40 bucks just to get You're telling me that dudes in scrubs with pot leaves on them were not legit. <laughs> <laughs> is that what they're going to say? 
I look back at that and go, yeah, I should have known. That. Yeah. That's on you, bro. I'm sorry for him at all. <laughs> You're not even close. I was moving back to Alabama and I thought, well, you know, I, I just it was a spur of the moment thing. Mm. I was like, man, yeah, I'd like to get the card just to be able to say I got one in California. <laughs> Dr. Green Wax is real. <laughs> is that legit? <laughs> but I'll, I'll tell you, man, it was an experience, though. I'm not. I don't regret. I got my forty bucks back. Back by the way. Yeah, did you? And there's a security <laughs> guard. There's a security guard standing outside. He knows. As soon as you walk out, he knows. Yep, you're pissed. I know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He just stands there and looks at you. The Nigerian prince. Did you email him your credit card? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he wants to, he's got some money too. You know, gullible. Whatever. So you played Red Rocks once. Yeah. How long ago was that? It wasn't long ago. It was uh, last fall. Was that a bucket list thing you always wanted? Kind of, yeah. I mean, like, I was He's like... He's been. You, you went to a show. Yeah, scri- just describe it. You were about to get into it. Well, I, like, I don't... I try not to get psyched up, you know? I'm trying to, I try to just treat every show like it's just a show, and the x-axis and y-axis of my latitude and longitudinal point is the only thing that's changed, and everything else is the same. So this is where I went into Red Rocks. I'm like, I'm not going to get hyped up about it. Everybody else around me was like, we're going to... Like, my friends, we're going to fly to the Red Rock show, the Red Rock show. That's all I could hear about for months. I don't really care. And then I got there and I got out of the bus and I went to sound check and I looked up and I was like, it all hit. I was like, <laughs> I like, Holy bet. shit. Because usually when you play in an amphitheater, you know, this shit, it's like, it goes out, you know, that, uh, whatever. they're not on top of you like they are. Yeah, and this is just a fucking wall. It's just this huge wall. Like it, pictures don't do it justice. When you're there, you kind of lose the 3d and it just looks 2d and it just goes straight up. And so you're like, look, it just goes up, 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 up. And your fans are seemingly hundreds of feet above you. And it's like you're a gladiator in an arena. And did y'all film it? I think so. I think. <laughs> I know there's, yeah, there's some stuff. I, I don't yeah. know if you get the whole thing. I think thing the label or... filmed it and we'll put it together for some documentary 20 years from now or some shit. I, don't, I can't watch myself. I can't listen to myself. Really? really? Yeah. So when you're it. tracking in the studio, it drives you crazy to listen to a playback. Can't do it. Really? Yeah. That's I mean, crazy. like that. That's the one time where I, I have to, and I can get into it and shit. But once a song is like done, it's. Do you have songs in your set you dread playing? Yes. <laughs> don't don't say which one. <laughs> People are coming to the show in the next few months. Yeah, no, I mean, I, no, I'll, I'll no give, I, I don't it. give a fuck. I'll say which ones I dread playing. Uh, <laughs> you don't give a shit. I, don't give a shit. You say what you I dread to, playing the the hits, man, because it's like I know that I know that's the money maker, and I'm so yes. thankful. I'm so fucking thankful and so blessed, and and I, you know I don't want people to think that like I'm not grateful for that. Yeah. But put yourself in my shoes for a minute, and like like we were talking about earlier, some of these hits are about situations in my life that we're hard. And so when I have to, and I'm not going to half-ass it. I'm not just going to become a cover band of myself. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I got to get into the mindset and, and sell it and be a part of that song and find the emotion and dig deep in order to perform it correctly. Yeah. Otherwise I'm phoning it in. Sure. And otherwise I don't feel right taking your ticket money. So I'm going to do it. Right. But it puts me sometimes in a depressive spot. And so some of the songs that people really, really love and it really, really helps them out. I understand it and I get it because I've got artists and songs that are the same for me mm-hmm. and I fucking love that. But I dread playing them sometimes because I'm like, damn, I was having a really good day. And now I got to, I got to fucking tap into a time in my life where I was very unhappy. Hmm. So I hope that people out there listening understand that. If you don't, fuck off. You know, whatever. It is what it is. But it's like, uh, Do you feel more happy now? Yeah. Is therapy a part of life now? No, it's not. God, man. Everybody I wish I had the I money and it. time to do therapy. I've and never done it. Have you done it? No, I would love to. Yeah. I would just feel like it would make me a better person. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm a grouchy asshole. Everybody oh, says I, that. Everybody has been telling me recently, like, mm, you know, it's everywhere. I'm like, what is it? I'm like, what is it? What does it say about me that everybody have recently has been <laughs> telling me? Like, like, it's like, you know, you're going to therapy, right? Yeah, but you might want to look into it. I heard it was great. I'm not doing it. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, there's always the fear that if you do that and fix yourself, mm. well, what if your creative juices fucking take a hike after, yeah. you, you know, if you get, if you get mentally well, I, I, I feel like I could use it for sure. <laughs> if you get mentally well. <laughs> He's right here. Yeah. Do you no, see what no, you're saying? No. Look, we're all crazy. We're in this line of work. 100% we're crazy. We're all crazy. And I, I think about that too. I'm like, you know, what, at what point, you know, to live is to suffer, right? Who said right, that? Right, right. Or something? And it's like, what do you want to do? Do you want to end the suffering, become happy, and then do you lose that creativity? I don't know. Because there are parts of me still suffering, you know? Yeah. 
But I think in the end, I want to be happy. I think I'm happier now as I age. I'm becoming more and more like, I just don't care. Yeah. As much. Yeah. You know? That's good. I mean, you know, this far into your career, you know, you didn't, did you, did, are there, there, were there tons of mistakes y'all made to get to where you are now? Yeah. 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 I still make mistakes, you know, still don't have it figured out. And I think a lot of people think that we're farther ahead in life than we are. And it's like, I just told you, like, I don't own a house yet. You know what I mean? Like, but that's smart. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a 46 year old guy and I can tell you right now, if the way you tour, it's not smart to own a house. I think I'm just indecisive too. Yeah. I don't know where I've been watching Yellowstone a lot. Me too. I just started this week. Oh, I swear to God, so I just started. Good. Did you watch the prequels and shit too? No, I didn't even know they existed. Like 1883. Yeah, I don't need to get any more bogged down in this shit than I am. Oh man, but now I'm like, oh, I, could, I could be in Montana. You could. Dude. I like Isn't Montana. It beautiful? It's so beautiful. Oh my God. You know a bunch of idiots have moved there too. I'm telling you. Like you will be surrounded. He's a year. He, if he watches one more season of Yellowstone, he's going to have a pet fucking crow without an outfit. He's going to be a long <laughs> No, that's the, what's the, like you see the 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 TikToks where it's like one week of watching. Yeah, yeah, one yeah month. two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Finish season five, guys. Looking at your watch. Finish season five, guys. <laughs> 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 you talking about on the mic? <laughs> that's so true. He's just walking miles long. I'm tired of your bullying a ton of your bullshit today. I'm telling you, we've been watching that show, going, God damn, it's beautiful there. But you know, there's so many annoying people now that are moving there because just because of the show, mm. you know, getting branded and bullshit like that. You know, I he, think they're saying. Another streaming pick. What's another streaming? Something we should watch. Something you should watch. So we, I, we drove down here, and for those that don't know, this is in Cleveland, Alabama, yeah. and I had to explain to him why there's a random water park in the middle of the country. So we were talking about the Netflix documentary about the the action park. Just action that shit. park. That shit was great, dude. <laughs> so great. That was great. I've got buddies of mine from New Jersey. Did you used to go there? No. Okay. I've got friends of mine that did, and they are they're talking about they would bring a bus full of people, and half the bus on the way back would have broken arms and collarbones. <laughs> it was just normal, and nobody thought it was like alarming, and that that should be shut down for any reason. I mean, I just saw your water park, and this is what made us think about it. It's like, <laughs> oh, y'all passed that water park coming in? Yeah, I was like, this is going to be random. Look over. Here's a water park in the middle of the country. <laughs> it's and he's like, have you seen Action Park? I go, think that. Yes. Yes. That so started out as a pond it with did. two slides and two diving boards. And over the years, they have built it up to where now it's all concreted slides everywhere. Millions and millions of dollars yeah, they've spent on huge. that place. It's got to be great, though. It I'm is. Just saying, it, it probably gets real hot around here. Especially ten minutes from the house, it's you know it's I a good told, place. I told that him you can it go. was. If you build it, they will come, man. He built mm -hmm. it out in the middle of nowhere, and we all went, well, okay, well I'm in. But <laughs> there's not a day that you drive by it when it's, it's open that that parking lot is not absolutely full. What, I miss what? that era. I miss that action park era. Like I caught the very tail end of it. You know, I think we're all around the same age, and I, and you guys remember the '80s and early '90s, and it was just a different fucking thing. And I miss that. I miss that energy. I, I really yeah. think that that was like probably, at least in my mind, like the peak of this round of human civilization was probably late yeah. '80s, early '90s. They enjoyed themselves. People enjoyed themselves. Yeah. They went caught up in all this bullshit. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Social media. <laughs> we quit Social doing cocaine. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> I mean, that's what it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We quit doing cocaine. <laughs> we quit doing cocaine. <laughs> we quit doing cocaine. Everybody. Yeah. 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 Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Bunch of quitters. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the Pearl Jam got off heroin and became <laughs> terrible, you know? <laughs> yeah, heroin. Boy, Pearl Jam was my band. I heard Food Fighters are going back out. Who are they going to carry out as a drummer? Have y'all heard that? Mm -mm. Mm. Nobody. Well, I, just, I was just talking to you. Uh, uh, what, do you got the Muse tour? Who else? Are you, uh, who, do you oh, have yeah, any other? Y'all yeah. playing with Muse. They're fucking great, dude. They're great. They're one of my favorite bands in the world. They uh, pick you? Yeah, they did. It's crazy. That's, a, that's another band that really doesn't have a genre to me. Right. They, I don't. I mean, they just got nominated for like best metal performance or something. They're very electronic. They're hard rock. They're like whatever they. I mean, that's their them. They're in their own lane. That's yeah, beautiful. They're real artists. They're like part of the reason why we started making originals in the first place. You know, me and, me and Rich would just spend hours watching Muse videos back in the early 2010s and shit and before that even and we were like okay this is a wave <laughs> so it's kind of like full circle and now we get to go out with them and shit and what's what's great about it is that because evanescence will be on that tour too yeah it's incredible and um their drummers are from here he's a good they're awesome boy. they're good people and amazing band and i'm just like 
I get to play for like a half an hour. Dude, you're just getting warmed up. You know? Right. So, so on the one hand, it's going to be very difficult to set a vibe because, you know, our shows are usually like an hour and a half, two hours long and I can get a vibe. Yeah. Very hard to get a vibe in a half an hour in an arena that people are coming in and filling in and they're not there for you. But on the plus side, I'm done at 730 and yeah. I can just go get fucked up. And what, like, I'm not even looking at this as like a tour to make money. I'm looking at this as a tour to go see Muse and Evanescence for free every night. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So stoked. Just and they got it set up like nice and cush where it's like they'll have a show and then the next day is off. And then show and the next day is off because they can. They don't have to do three, four in a row <laughs> right. to make right. it work. Right. So yeah. I'm like, this is going to be amazing for me. When's that start? In April? Yeah. Who, who's another band that you'd love to tour with? Whether it's you I want guys to I tour with Lil Yachty. I want to tour with Lil Yachty right now. Have Ooh. you guys heard? I know this sounds insane. Have you guys heard Lil Yachty's new album? No. Do you know who Lil Yachty is? Yes. Yeah. It'll change your fucking brain. Did it just released? Or something? Oh my god! Yeah, it just came out last week. And uh, Scooter Braun. Hey, that can come out in Alabama then. Scooter Braun bought the label he's on for $300 million yesterday so that he could own the masters of this album. Something happened on this album. And basically, I don't know, you guys familiar with that show, Chillin' Island on HBO? It's There's wild. a streaming recommendation. It's absolutely Did you wild. see the episode with Lil Yachty? Yeah. Did you see when they were making fun of him for having a Pink Floyd tattoo? And he's like, <laughs> fuck this, I'm out. Yeah. Do you know what he did? He went into a studio with a bunch of creatives and he created his version of Dark Side of the Moon and he did a psychedelic rock album and it is fucking brilliant. Really? And it is like the best thing I've heard come out. It's a game changer, for sure. Are all three of those guys on Chillin' Island artists? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, dude, I just stumbled upon it one night on HBO Max. You've got to watch it. There's three, three, fr- so three or four friends, but they have a guest every time. But they just get fucked up on something, anything, <laughs> and go out in the woods. Yeah, mm-hmm. they go out in the woods, or they go fishing like on a yep. a, a fishing boat, or they will. Uh, Go, they'll go do anything in the outdoors. Yeah, like, and they take rappers camping. <laughs> they do, yeah. And they're on like psilocybin or something. Yeah, it is they a just wild show up. Concept. They don't even know where they're going. Yeah. They're out in the desert. Like it is bar- But it has no. Ma- Stephen Wright narrates it, which is hilarious <laughs> to me. It's a bonker show. I, every time I'll go, I don't even know why, what I watched. Yeah. Who was the kid on the boat that bailed? Do you remember that guy? A, a lot of them wind up bailing because they can't <laughs> handle it. They're like rappers, and they're like, "What the fuck are these white dudes doing to me right now?" Like, oh, they're <laughs> mushrooms yeah. and shit. Oh, they're either mushrooms or weed or drink. They, yeah, they do something. They go. They went out on a uh, fishing boat, and literally like thirty minutes in, the rapper he's like, "I'm out." <laughs> they had to get another boat to pick him up, <laughs> so they would like cut to them on the boat, and then cut to him sitting on the dock eating lunch. <laughs> what did yep. they do? Um, uh, they did. Um, Oh, Killer Mike's right, and like he was with uh, in the just in the woods out behind somebody's house. It's a fucking gnarly show. You should get on there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds like you're that fucking like you're out, out, right. I think it would be less funny because I, I would be like down for everything that they're doing. <laughs> yeah. 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 You want to take fucking drugs in the swamp? Hundred okay. <laughs> percent in, dude. Do y'all even know me? By the way, if that's on your bucket list, you're in Alabama right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing drugs in the swamp is highly rated here. Yeah, no <laughs> yeah, we saw some interesting characters on the drive here, or at least one. There was one. Oh, what oh. the fuck? Was that? Yeah, one dude had a bandana. Full bandana. Walking down the road. Yeah, did you see? Yeah. You saw him? Yeah. Full cover. Just, I'm just saying he just quit the lab this morning. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I might know him. I quit mean, I just quit couldn't lab. see his face. He's actually the mayor of ARAPS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why don't you submit to go out on tour with Lil Yachty? I'm going to. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, you've already got your no by not asking, so you might as well just fucking go for That's it. That's right. Go for it. That's right. And your fans, you know, they're all along for the ride. They're down for it. Well, I, mean, I just heard the album for the first time yesterday and then about six times after that. And uh, <laughs> now I'm going to hit up my booking agent and be like, what's up? What can we? How can we get involved with this album? It's it's incredible. If you guys like Pink Floyd or psychedelic rock or anything, yeah, uh, check it out. We like mushrooms too. I yeah. love, <laughs> love mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that's part of it. But that's part wait. of listening of experience. Sponsors. I am in, dude. Mushrooms are my jam lately. I can't wait till that's like fully legalized. It's coming. You know it's coming. It's, it's coming. It's curing fucking depression and so many war veterans and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's coming. That like that's places that is, do ketamine therapy. That's where you'll start seeing it. Is Oregon anything. the only one? I think Oregon's the only state that's. Oh yeah, they're down to party in Oregon, maybe for sure. <laughs> Who? 
Oregon said, will do whatever. Yeah, yeah, I said they're down to party and they're down for whatever down in Oregon. They've legalized everything. I'm going to hit you with some random questions okay. since we got the music shit out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> What's the last thing you stole? <laughs> wow. Damn, I kind of do steal things sometimes. <laughs> do you? Um, are you a hotel stealer? You still shit? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Because I don't feel bad about stealing from... You shouldn't. The rich. For what they, <laughs> for what they charge you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> right. hood over here. Wait, what's your go-to from the uh, hotel? I stole, what are you taking? I stole a sword out of a bar, and it was uh, like this broadsword that was hanging up on the behind the bar and the bartender was like don't you because she saw me looking at it and i'm like talking to my friend she's like i know what the fuck this guy's thinking right and i had them uh my buddies pull up the van in the front i said get it ready keep the door open and i literally hopped over that um, I hopped over that bar and I grabbed that fucking sword off the wall and I ran out of that bar with a sword in my hand and people chasing me and just got into a moving van and yeah, that's, it's gnarly. That's the what best the story I've ever heard. Don't tell the city because I don't want you to get in trouble. Uh, what's it wrong with? Schmooch more? Uh, or Schmell A? Or Who's Steel? the most famous person you got in your phone? Oh, Pamela Anderson. No shit. Yeah. That would answer your call. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. What's hey, it? that's a maybe, though. Yeah. Was that a maybe or yeah, was that a no? It just depends on the... You know, where she's at in life. Where do y'all meet? Where do y'all meet? What function? You know what? I honestly can't get into the Pam stories too much because I want to protect that sweet human. She's a sweet human. Deal. And, uh, good. Crazy stories, but I, you know, I'm not going to get into that shit. Look, I so, like your character. You know what I mean? That's good of you to do that. So, because we would ask you. Did you watch the the <laughs> Pam and Tommy and then the <laughs> other one? I, yeah, I, I watched it. It was tough to watch. Again, she's a really, really yeah, genuinely seems, sweet human. She seems like it. In the in the one that just came out, that she's involved with not the pam and tommy hulu when she man you could tell how much she loves those kids and just like you said it you, with a lot of celebrities they're just a celebrity and just a like not even of this atmosphere and then you you forget they're human well, it, yeah all right so i think about this man and it must be tough because they're celebrities and then there's icons yeah. and the icon thing is like it's almost sad in a way because these people just kind of get trapped. You know, you think of like your Michael Jacksons, you know, I think Pam Landers is an icon. You sure. get trapped into this, like, you have to be this thing forever and you can't go fucking anywhere when it's you're rough. that status. You can't do shit. Mm -mm. You cannot live a normal life. There's a comfortable the famous mm -hmm. that you can get. And if you get above that, your life, I mean, it can just fucking fall apart. Like, I could not imagine. And that's why with the Kanye shit, I don't know if you, did you guys watch the documentary? Yeah, it's great. It's actually really like, you know, I have some sympathy. I, I don't know if I should like be a Kanye sympathizer after some of the recent shit. Yeah, yeah be careful now. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> but we'll I, pull this out. Yeah, no, 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 it's all good. <laughs> but, you know, I, I tried to stay on the ship as long as I could uh, yeah. um, because you watch that documentary and you, and you realize you can't possibly imagine what it's like to have the entire world's eyes on you 24 7 and on your family and on you know what i mean and it drives the person to you know uh, certain minds are going to be able to handle it one way and certain minds are yeah. going to like be able to handle it another and he's got a mental illness right like so that stacked on top of that how would you navigate and no sympathy for it and i feel like as a as a society it would be way cooler if we were like man that's our bro he helped change rap music throughout the late 90s and early 2000s and he's responsible for so much good material that we all you know we've all danced to a kanye song at some point whether yeah. we know it or not yeah right do you know what i mean he produced so many things we've all been in the bar and danced to something that he made and so shouldn't we when he's down be like hey man it's like let's not make fun of him of let's course come together and help him out i and, think the same brain that does that that's that genius is going to have that side effect mm -hmm. it's just part of it you know mm -hmm. it's something that people should probably look into and, and be more acceptable you know yeah because we you know we've had the blueprint laid out there's been so many child stars and so many people that have hit uh you know massive levels of fame and then their life completely deteriorates and they wind up dying and it's like at what point are we going to stop uh driving people to that level and start helping i don't know i don't know that you can it's like the human condition yeah you get yeah. under that microscope and it seems next to impossible you know yeah. yeah that's what i was saying too of seeing those documentaries of like in the kanye doc there's a clear line before and after his mom passed yeah. of that he changed 1,000%. Yeah. And, you know, if you've ever had a parent you were close with die, you're like, it is. It's a life. 
it's a life changing thing and everybody handles it completely different. And that was, I felt like watching it. It was kind of the spark of whatever he had, whatever he was already fighting. That was just fuck this. I'm just going to mm-hmm. not fight it anymore and just be who I say whatever I want to say and think how I want to think and do whatever. But it was, it's wild, man. They, like they're humans. You just forget they're humans. Do you feel like you're the perfect level of celebrity? Like you don't want to get any more popular than <laughs> you are now. Charlie wants more in fear of being perfect in that. level of celebrity. Um, yeah, to be honest with you, I don't. Because you can go places. I can go places, yeah. and it's so nice. It's so, like especially in Los Angeles and New York and shit. Like I don't, I can just walk around. Yeah, and it's fine. But then if I'll go to like Boise, Idaho, or something, and, and you know we're in town, I can't. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it, big, gets, it gets a little bit like big fish, little pond. Man. I have a hard time. I get like agoraphobia in general. So like, yeah, I don't really want to get more recognizable in that respect. But there's also this part of me that like, I do want to put out a lot of art and I want it to succeed. Do you know what I mean? Like I want to be able to affect people with music for as long as I can. Um, But yeah, I don't want to be under the microscope like that. I would never want to be, and I don't don't think I have to worry about it. I don't think in my line of work with like, you know, aging rock and roller, like, you know, (laughs) TMZ is not knocking down my door and shit, you know? So I think I'm good for now, but you never know. You don't have stage fright anymore, do you? Sometimes. Like when I did the solo show, that was, I was fucking petrified because I didn't have my boys around me. I didn't have me. Yeah, that jacket you feel comfortable in. Yeah, Yeah, I was like, but it was, it was cool like i wanted to challenge myself and do something different um i do get stage fright sometimes like honestly you know we smoke a lot of weed sometimes on stage and that is when sometimes it goes well and then other times i'm like what the fuck who are these people looking at me what am i what is life what am i doing <laughs> but i also can't help myself like if I, if I smell it if somebody's smoking it on stage i'm like oh, I'm trying to pass it up yeah. pass it up rich what's up <laughs> um i would lose Complete train of thought. Yeah, I would not. Well, that's like, what I'm saying. Is it this happens. Song? Sweet child of mine. Is that? Every time we go to Amsterdam, we uh we we do the mushroom chocolates because they have oh. like the you can buy them in the in the stores and shit. And I've never had those. Oh, they're so great because they're dosed out and you, you don't have to like overtake. You know, you can. Yeah. Although I still like to I like to push it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but every time we're there, we all play tripping and. We think we're great. I don't know. Like, <laughs> Here's how my friend described it, and tell me if you think this is accurate. You can hear the notes before you hit them, mm. before you play them. Mm. Interesting. Do you, you ever feel that way when you're on mushrooms? I don't you know what feel... the fuck's happening when I'm on mushrooms. But yeah, but <laughs> yeah, it's like, it just like feels good. I'm like, oh, this oh, song God. just fucking feels so good. <laughs> well, just touching this guitar. Like you're afraid. I, don't, I don't know what I did. I don't want to hear it. I laugh so goddamn hard on mushrooms, dude. It is unbelievable. I cannot quit. I just laugh and laugh and laugh. And the reason I prefer that over weed is when I get high, man, I will eat. Yeah. I'll eat your fingers off your fucking body. I don't give a shit. When I get hungry, it is embarrassing. Right. Like, I mean, mushrooms, you, I don't have an appetite at all. No, not at all. But, you know, so why is that illegal? Why is happiness illegal? You know what I mean? Because it's like you know. ever see somebody on, well, I mean, maybe it's happened, but I feel like the, uh, the rate of um, angry mushroom attacks is probably <laughs> pretty low. Well. Like, I've heard that I've heard somebody on Rogan's podcast talk about how why all these drugs became illegal and it had something to do with alcohol and the it, them trying to get alcohol through and in order to get alcohol through they made all the other substances illegal or something like that mm. I could be making that up but it seems like I remember them saying some <laughs> shit like, like that great story. Yeah, you delivered it like you knew yeah. what you were talking about yeah. <laughs> I believe it I'm in I'm back in I'm in politics yeah well, man, we'll let you get out of here. We really appreciate you coming in, dude. Man, thanks this, for having this me. This meant a lot to us, man. It's You're the biggest guest we've ever had on here. So. And he's a fat joke or what? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I was the guest last week. So, yeah, so you know that's not fucking yeah. true. Uh, no, nah, man, I appreciate it. And again, I uh, this is my first like podcast. Dude, they're fun. And no offense to the, to the radio interview type of thing, <laughs> but it's just so... 
be nice to talk and just like dude not, that's something else not, you need to do yeah you've got shit on your mind all the time you yeah. should have a podcast yeah dude. maybe i should because it's just or, or be on them more often it's just nice to talk and i feel like with, with the radio interviews i'm often like rushed and it's like so what's next for the fucking song what's next? It's like, oh, yeah i yeah. saw the sirius xm one yeah you know, it was like a therapy session she, like, well she's a great friend of mine katie is she yeah so that was the last one i did and then um i actually i did listen to you before i agreed to it and yeah. i you know heard some of your episodes and i was like these guys seem like uh easy people to talk to oh yeah we're not gonna jab you with any gotcha questions or bullshit like that <laughs> we're not smart well, enough I had to, to do check. that i was like i was like i don't know i don't oh, know, be no, fucking no, I get, like, I get you gotta know some head hunters into. out there you know oh for sure man well good luck to you man good luck with the muse tour and get continued success man I, I don't see how uh everything you you're batting a thousand man so i don't see how you know anything you decide to dabble I'm in. glad it looks that way <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's, yeah. laughs> you're whipped cream in that turret great yeah. man yeah, <laughs> thank you guys so much x5 yes sir we'll see you guys next week make sure you like and subscribe and leave a review on apple podcast please that would really help us out i know i keep i've never said that and I, my producer's like hey man you want to bump the numbers up get people to start <laughs> reviewing it but anyway thank y'all and um so what's, what's, what, are, what is y'all's website? HighlySuspect.net for the band, uh, TerribleHouse.com for the for the clothing line, and uh, you just find me on Instagram if you're pretty enough, slide in the DMs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Come talk that shit to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see y'all next week. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>